Hey everybody, I'm Eric Mueller, and welcome back to The Eric Mueller Show, the podcast where we explore what makes any successful person's inner clock tick. You are a leader. Everyone listening in this moment is a leader. Do you agree? Do you feel like you have leadership within you? Well, my guest today believes this to be absolutely 100% true. Yanni Gratzanopoulos is an award-winning Fortune 200 trainer and business coach with over 10,000 hours of consulting, training, and coaching within both the nonprofit and business worlds. While traveling the country early in his career, leaders would come to him and ask for help and guidance. Back then, he wouldn't have called this coaching. He was just helping leaders become better leaders. And leadership is something Yanni knows well. He has experience leading seven organizations, which include two churches, an evangelistic ministry, and four businesses. Yanni believes that everyone is a leader and has leadership in some form or another in their life. Therefore, it would benefit all of us to be mindful of our current leadership status. What is your status? Do you feel like you're leading your life, or is your life leading you? Do you ever feel stuck or burnt out? No matter your answers, I really believe this episode will help. Yanni and I explore how to develop a clear, concise vision to pursue any goal in your life and feel confident in measuring your progress as a leader along the way. Yanni's high energy, storytelling, and humor will captivate you from the beginning, and I know you'll be ready to tackle your next challenge with his guidance and advice. Let's head on over to the interview. All right, so welcome back to The Eric Mueller Show, a podcast where we explore what makes any successful person's dinner clock tick. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into a very important piece in the success puzzle, developing your vision. So whether it be the overall vision for your life, your entrepreneurial vision, maybe your leadership vision, or or possibly a vision for a passion project, you want to have it very clear in your mind what that vision is. Now, our guest of honor today, Yanni Gratzanopoulos, is a seasoned leader with many years of experience in guiding and mentoring leaders from all walks of life. He's a leader himself. He's a business owner. He's an entrepreneur. Yanni, welcome to the show, sir. Eric, thank you for having me. And I just thank you to your audience for even listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a privilege for, for everybody here. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to get to talk to you. Thank you for making the time to be a guest on here. I really think when I was trying to think of what focus we could take with this, I think vision just really stuck out to me with your experience. So you've you've had leadership experience, like I've previously mentioned, and, and business experience. So you've had that entrepreneur piece too. Yanni, in, in your opinion, why does why does vision matter? And what problems does a lack of vision create for an individual? Eric, really good question. And I want to answer that second question first. Yep. Uh, a lack of vision creates every problem. <laughs> And I know that may sound audacious, if you will, but it truly does. Most problems within an organization uh, come back to either a lack of a vision or the lack of articulation around that vision or the lack of understanding around that vision. And and, and the reason for that is there's a very, very old um, kind of wise saying, if you will, pithy saying, and it's very simple. It's thousands of years old, and it says, without vision, the people perish. And the the truth of that concept, right? Now, to understand what that means, we have to look at what vision is. And, And when we're talking about it from an entrepreneurial standpoint or a business standpoint, organization standpoint, even a life standpoint, family standpoint, a vision is the mark. It's it's what we call B in the A to B scenario. Another way to think about it is think of uh, of a GPS. You put in where you're going, right? You don't tell the GPS, oh, this is GPS. This is where I am. If you have a GPS and you have to tell them where you are, you need a new GPS. (laughs) Okay. Okay? It's not going to work. So the idea behind a GPS is you have to tell the GPS where you're going. You do not get turn by turn directions without that singular piece. Even the GPS knows where you are. They know your exact coordinates. They can show you on a map, but without knowing 
the specific place where you're going, the GPS can do nothing for you. That is vision. Vision is the destination of where you're going, your organization, your family, your life, your business. And without knowing that, it creates every problem. Now you might say, oh, well, I know where we're going. That's more like a goal though, Yanni. That's this this end point. Okay, but vision is the end point. And then there's the work of building the roadmap and articulating the vision in a way that everybody not just knows where it is, but they know how to get there. So from an organizational perspective, we'll take a, a small business. Uh, let's use our example business. I don't know. Eric, what do you think? What's a good uh, industry for our example business? You know, I'm thinking e-commerce. I'm thinking e-commerce store. Perfect. Perfect. So they're an e-commerce business. Uh, and let's say they sell on Amazon and eBay, right? They're just slinging stuff through. And you might say, okay, what's their vision? The first thought that everybody has is, oh, it's a, it's a monetary metric, right? Oh, they hit $5 million. Now I'm going to tell you for most companies, that would be a goal, not a vision. And I'm going to tell you why, because now a goal can be a vision. But what are you going to do with that $5 million? That's a target. That's not a vision of where your company is. For a business owner, they're going to look and go, okay, I'm a solopreneur. I'm an e-commerce company. I want to have uh, uh, 10 employees funneling X amount of money a month and, and through the business with a revenue of that, right? So it's not a singular goal. It's a holistic destination. Now, now, here's why I bring that up. Notice how I articulated the vision. I talked about it as a moment in time. Man, our vision is the day when uh, Graz, uh, even better, Mueller e-commerce, when Mueller e-commerce reaches that moment, we've got 15 employees, we're slinging uh, $100 million of product through our e-commerce platform, and we're on the cusp of developing the next best thing within e-commerce. When we've hit those three metrics, and, and we'll know that we have, right? Because we're sit, we're all in our office. Maybe we're going to come in brick and mortar or we're on our Zoom call and I'm going to jump on and say, we did it. We hit all three, right? A vision has to be articulated as a moment in time. Why this is important, right? Right now, everything I'm talking about is theory. Let's yeah. bring it down to some brass tacks. When you have that vision and everybody on your team knows that vision, it clarifies everything. Here's what I mean. Somebody comes along and goes, okay, Eric, man, Mueller e-commerce, this is amazing, right? We're selling on Amazon. We're selling on eBay. I got to tell you, you know, it'd be a great idea is if we started selling Mary Kay. And you might think, that's so stupid. Nobody would say that idea to an e-commerce company. That stuff happens in organizations all the time. When you don't have a clearly articulated vision, that idea can even seem like a halfway good one. Hey, well, sales are kind of, we've been struggling a little bit. Hey, let's start slinging Mary Kay. No, 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 no. This is the vision that we're doing, right? When everybody knows that vision, they don't deviate from it. In fact, they will come to the leaders of that organization and go, okay, I know that you said 15 employees, you want $100 million coming through, and we're going to have the next best thing in e-commerce. Gosh, I've been thinking about that. You know what's missing in our e-commerce portfolio is the ability to look in and see how clients are enjoying what they've purchased a year later. Oh, man, right? You know that you've reached vision perfection when the people on your team are thinking off the clock about how to reach that moment, that goal. What happens, and I can't, I've, I've coached so many organizations. I've been a part of so many organizations who you ask them, what's, what's the vision? Oh, our vision is to be the, literally the number one e-commerce platform on Amazon. Oh, that's incredible right? How are you going to get there? Or we're going to get there through this, 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 and this. Okay. That's great. That's where we're going. Number one e-commerce. Hey, uh, Eric, I was thinking about it, man. If, if we added 
uh, this and this, if we partnered with this company, I think it would, that's a great idea, man, (laughs) Eric, I got to tell you, you know, what's going to make us a lot of money is if we start selling Mary Kay, listen to how asinine that sounds, right? It doesn't, why does it sound asinine? Because against the backdrop of a clear vision, anything that's not in line with that vision is, it sounds asinine. It cuts down on all the arguments. It cuts down on people um, j- just not performing. And it cuts down on HR mistakes because you can, from the get-go, you can talk with somebody and say, we are passionate about being the number one e-commerce platform on Amazon. And somebody goes, oh, I mean, that sounds cool, but <laughs> you know, I just wanted a job. Oh, great. You're not part of our team. I need you passionate about e-commerce and Amazon because that's our vision. All right. I know I've been droning on, but man, when I get passionate, I get excited. (laughs) No, that's a, I mean, that's a perfect way to view it because as you were talking, I was thinking about how vision and purpose kind of intertwine. So you really need at least the research I've done with leadership and, and, you know, motivating employees to get them to buy in. They need to know why they're doing something, you know, why, why it means, why it's meaningful to them. So how can we tie in, you know, that, that personal vision with company vision? Or if, did you have something you wanted to add to that? No. And, and Eric, that's a great segue, right? Tying those in. First thing, personal, and, and it's, it's all related. Personal vision and company vision have to match. They have to align. So if I'm an entrepreneur, if I'm a business owner, I'm not hiring anybody whose personal vision doesn't align with the business, business vision. By the way, if you're an entrepreneur, or business owner or leader, and your personal vision doesn't align with the business vision, you need to go do something else because you're the one that's sucking out all the energy from everything else that everybody's doing, right? You, right. You've got to bring people in who under, not just understand the vision, but are after the vision. Why? Because of something you just said. Organizations that motivate their people don't have a clear vision. You don't have to motivate people who you hired, who have the vision that you have. Usually in those organizations, you have to slow them down. Okay. Okay. That's a great idea. (laughs) Partnering, right? Partnering with eBay and Amazon to become the number one Amazons, right? Because we're going to, that's a great idea, right? And those of you, uh, those of your audience that are in e-commerce, they're going to be like, well, we don't. Look, I'm not an idea guy. I'm a leadership guy, right? So uh, don't take that to the bank. But but the point is, you're going to have to, you know, you've articulated vision because you're going to have to slow your people down. This works in families, by the way, right? When when your family has a vision, this is the type of family we're going to be in. This is the, t- and your kids, your spouse, they're going to come to you and say, hey, I was thinking this. You're going to have to slow everybody down because people who are connected with vision. Everybody wants to be connected with vision. Look at political movements. When we get around election time, it's it's trumpets and banners and everybody wants to be part of the vision of something bigger than themselves. As a leader, you have to instill that. Leaders who have clearly casted and articulated vision, they don't motivate their people. They remind their people. That's a huge difference. Hey, team. Okay, here we go. Look, I know we've been trudging through the mud. Things are going crazy. But our vision is to be the number one uh, e-commerce platform on Amazon, right? And and everybody gets really excited. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. But here's the thing. That vision why does anybody care? What are you going to do with it? Right? Oh, my vision is to be the number one e-commerce platform on Amazon. Why? Right? So vision consists of three things. You mentioned purpose. It's a purpose statement, which is the why. The, The mission statement, which is the how. And then the vision statement, which is the what. Right? This is what we're going to do. We're going to be the number one e-commerce platform on Amazon. That's great. How are we going to do it? We're going to do it by these four steps. This, this, this. Most organizations understand their how. Why? 
That's that purpose. We're going to do that because once we do that, we're going to take all of these resources and put them to philanthropy, right? Or this type of thing. All three of those encompass a vision statement. And so all of a sudden you, you've hired a bunch of people who they know once you hit that, that vision, all of the sudden everybody, let's say everybody gets to, who signs on, they get to choose a, um, a philanthropic thing of their own that the company will sponsor. So everybody, once we hit this mark, you get to, you get to send $100,000 of company money to your charity of choice. That is the why. And it all encompasses the vision. You don't need to motivate those people. You just remind them, hey, don't forget, right? Don't forget uh, the U.S. Hunger Foundation. Don't don't forget uh, NATO. Don't forget Red. Don't forget right. Don't forget uh, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. This is why we're doing this. You remind them of the vision that's there. Very well articulated. I think. I mean, many thoughts come to my mind when you're going through that, Yanni. And and the first thing that really kind of hit me when you were describing the clear vision that you have, I, I immediately thought of you know startups that. You know, their team is fully bought in, possibly even vested in, from an equity standpoint. You know, it's very easy if you're a founder or co-founder or something out there listening, you know, a solopreneur or a business owner, you know, you likely bought into the vision before you even really started what you were doing. So yes. if you can ideally hire those people that have that same mindset or that, you know, can be passionately in at the beginning, you know, that's ideal. I, I think that would be the first option. But on the inverse side of that, I was thinking of, you know, some larger corporations that exist today, you know, certainly their vision, you know, their mission, all that is, is clearly articulated, maybe even on their website where you can read it. Um, you know, even just a massive company like Walmart or something, you can say what they stand for, what they, how they want to do it and and why, but do you see it? Is there like a, a disconnect between, you know, the, the entry level employee or somebody that's working in the store and the, you know, the higher up, so to speak. So a lot of you know, that kind of segmented type of, of leadership, I think happens naturally when, when something grows to a certain extent, what can someone, you know, maybe someone listening is in charge of a lot of people, what might they be able to do to, to continue to remind, you know, their employees of that vision. And, and even, even if they're not in management, how they might be able to tie that vision themselves. So you just brought up a really interesting point, especially for middle management, right? So let's take a look at someone like Walmart. Massive, massive company. So Walmart's whole thing is is they're going to be the low price leader, right? They, if you can't afford it anywhere else, you're going to be able to afford it at Walmart if you can afford it at all, right? Okay. For someone in middle management, let's say you're a store manager, or or let's say you run, you're you know you're in an office building and and you do have hundreds or a hundred people or a dozen or even ten people who report to you. Your job is to take the company vision and re-articulate it to fit the work your team is supposed to do. That's your job as a leader. So if you so let's back up for a second. Let's say you're the leader of leaders. Your job as the leader of leader is to take that company vision that you believe in, that you've bought into, and re-articulate it. to each of those leaders, how it matters, right? So let's say that you handle um, uh, sales and marketing. There's tons of departments there. Your job is to go to that director of sales and say, okay, this is how the company vision articulates into sales. This is how I need you articulating it down to the sales team. This is how I need you to hire. Okay, marketing team, this is how I need you. And so your job is to synthesize that vision into something personal and roll it out to your team. Why? Because you still have to hire to that vision. You still have you still have to remind of that vision. You have to recruit to that vision. You have to drive to that vision. The people who struggle the most work under the leaders or are the leaders who are not tapped in to the vision, right? This is where all of, and then here's what happens. Then the infighting comes in. Why are we doing this? Let's do this. You don't get those questions when there's a vision. I think we should go the other direction. And then you get the mutinies and then you get, 
But when everybody is on that clear cut vision, this is what we do. Maybe one of the easiest ways to look at this is a factory job. I had a client one time, they, they made steel posts, giant steel beams, like, you know, for outside lights, these things were massive and there, it was a very simple process. Raw steel would come in, you'd go through a bunch of machines that this team would run and oversee, and then steel posts would come out, get loaded onto a train and go. It was a giant assembly line. They had one job. They had to make as many posts as possible on time without the machines breaking. That was it. That was their job. And they, why? Because if they don't do that, street lights aren't going up. They were literally lighting the world. So it was very focused. It was very singular because they had a boss who came in who was a corporation in a corporation of a corporation. The boss came in and said, look, this is our vision. Our vision is to light, right? To light the world. There are street lamps that need it. So this is what we need to do. And, and people bought in. Yeah, I'm excited about this. When, when you can distill the vision back to your team. Now, let me get a little more passionate about it, right? Let's talk visions that everyone, because I've been, I've been talking kind of about bit more standard, what we consider boring business stuff. But let's, let's go to a vision that people really articulate in. Our company exists to give access to, and, and I'm not saying my real company, but right, maybe I should. Let's do that. My company exists to help leaders get unstuck. And that is what we do, right? Why is that passionate? Why is that exciting? Because I can look at somebody who I'm going to hire to work for me and I'm going to say, listen, there are leaders right now who are up at 2 a.m. They're up at 2 a.m. and they don't know how they're going to answer these questions. They have a board of directors who's angry at them. They have sales that are down. They have um, aspects of their, their culture. There's infighting. They don't know how it got there. They have people who are trying to mutiny over them. It, and, and they're up at 2 a.m. sitting at their kitchen table, rubbing their head, can't sleep, stressed out, wondering if they should just quit at all, right? That I am passionate about that leader. We can help that leader. Are you passionate about that? Yeah. Great. Now watch this. Your job is to answer the phones. Well, how does answering the, they can't, and this is where as a leader, I distilled in my employees, your job is to answer the phones and, and you don't know who's calling. It could be a vendor of ours. It could be somebody trying to sell us something, or it could be that person who's calling at 9 a.m. who has barely slept at all. And you know what they need right now from you? They need somebody with a caring, happy voice who's going to say, hey, you've had a crappy night and you're stressed out and we're here to help. Thanks for calling Graz LLC. What? That's what you would tell the receptionist. That's what I would tell every single person that came to work with me. Because if they can't understand the vision and the passion of what we're doing, then I have to motivate them. Hey, you're being rude to the people again. Hey, okay, we'll go back to Walmart, right? These people are, some people are coming into Walmart because they can't find it anywhere else. So they're coming into Walmart because this is the only place where they can afford it. You know what? Some of them are coming late at night because they're working two jobs and they're trying to fend for their family and they're trying to do things economically. They're coming in stressed out and, and you're, you're stacking produce. And somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm, I'm so sorry. Do, I'm looking for a bandsaw, right? I, I, need a, I need a light bulb. I want you to look at them as if it is your grandmother who's lost because we are here to help these people, right? As a store manager, that's what I'm doing. The vision of Walmart is a certain clientele who can, who they're coming into a, this is, this is what they need to do. They need to come to Walmart because Walmart has it. Nobody else has it. They need to be able to afford it because no other place can they afford it. Walmart has the lowest prices. And so I am literally looking at my people and say, do you care about human beings who are struggling financially? I do. Then whether they look like they're wealthy or not, I want you to treat every single person like they've just finished their second shift 
eight hour shift in that day. And what I don't care if you're stacking onions, I want you, you walk them over to that light bulb and you find that light bulb for them. That is how you distill Walmart's overarching vision all the way down to that employee and middle management's job is to do it. By the way, if you do it, that's how you excel because your team will rally around that vision and deliver the customer service or the experience or the sale or the marketing or whatever it is in a degree that you couldn't manufacture on your own. I think that's insane. I I, I think that, I mean, that is just thinking about that and thinking about actually having that be implemented. It, it's insane in a good way, Yanni, because I think, I mean, I can just think of how many examples where I don't see that happen and how many, how many opportunities could exist where if that was done at the middle management level, you know, you would probably see people succeed, you know, succeed in their career in a way that they didn't think was possible. A, those employees that are, you know, the entry level, they would maybe, you know, if they buy in, they might be able to rise up in a way that maybe, maybe that was their dream to do that, to try to climb that corporate ladder. But do you think that that middle management, if they do that successfully, that is how you get to the next level within those companies? If someone is, you know, from my background in healthcare, we, we might have someone listening who is currently a pharmacy manager or possibly a pharmacy owner. And if they, if they're yearning to, you know, hit that next step and go to the region or possibly, you know, the district, you're saying that is how they do it. They need to get their team to, they need to hire the right people. In other words, right. You need to hire, you will back all the way up. Cause you're spot on with what you're saying. You need to know your organization's vision, whether you own the organization or you're somewhere in management or you're an entry-level worker, you need to know that vision. And if you're in any type of leadership, you need to be able to synthesize and articulate that vision for each of the people on your team. Is that the way to move up? It is the only way to move up. That's not true. Or you can be a tyrant and smack people. I mean, just lead with a whip and just cycle through people in, in a just cry to churn enough revenue out where, okay, now the higher ups go, well, I don't know how you did it, but yeah, you get promoted. And then the next poor sap that comes in to take your place has to deal with your chaos that you left. Unfortunately, that's how most people do it. And what happens is, is they ascend, but they've left such a burning fire of rubbish in the place that they promoted from that that actually sucks them down in, in a black hole. It, inevitably, what they, what they have torched is going to torch them because they, they ascend to a leadership position that still is leading that area. Oh, well, I'll just blame the poor sap that comes in. It never works that way. Eventually, you get found out. The people who, who move up in management and continue to move up, who are thinking from a place of longevity, they realize that not only do they need to build their team now, but they're going to need that team down the road. Because if, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a customer service supervisor, where do I go from there? I become a customer service manager, managing the supervisor who just took over my team. Well, if my old team sucks, that's going to kill my overarching uh, numbers as a manager right? I need to build this team. So this team gets it. And here's why. Because when I go from a supervisor to a manager, I need to go to my old team and say, I'm going to rely on you. We're going to take what we've been doing and push it across. Now the 40 people that I manage, I used to manage seven. Now I manage 40. We're going to take what worked and we're going to go across, but I need you to be my champions, right? My internal champions that say, Hey, hold on, you should do it this way. And this is why, and here's the vision. Here's what's going on, right? So it's not just a matter of promoting from within, but promoting from within in a way that gives longevity, not just to you, but to the people on your team, to the company as a whole. Absolutely, this is the way to do it. You, you will promote, you will grow as a leader. And this so we'll back up. When I first got into business, I had a fabulous leader. And I asked him one day, I said, how do you know that you won? How do you know that you've been successful? And he looked at me and he said, 
when the people who work on my team are successful, I've won. And I said, but, but what if, what if that doesn't get you anywhere? And he, he just looked at me and said, Yanni, there's no way that can't get you somewhere. And I watched him promote. I watched him lift up the people on his team and, and it created such synergy and, and in the business realm that we were in such profitability that he promoted. He's hit every single, in fact, he just recently retired. He literally hit the goal in 10 years that he told me he wanted to hit doing one singular thing, synthesizing the vision, delivering it to his people and helping them win. And so he would define success in that way. So, you know, motivating the people is essentially the overarching theme, at least the way I think of it. I know, you know, you don't have to motivate a team if they're bought into the vision. But the the way I think of it in terms of, you know, having management experience myself a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously it's, it's, it's challenging. I mean, it's challenging to get that, that synergy. And, and I think, you know, people listening that, that are business owners or, or that are in management, you know, they're probably, they're probably curious if, if there's a, a secret sauce, so to speak, as far as how to, how to, you know, relate with, with people from different backgrounds and different experiences, people that, you know, you're, you're different. You're probably dealing with people that are various ages, have families, don't have families, married, not married, you know, to create a synergy of that is, is, is challenging in, in a lot of ways. And it could lead to, to managers feeling burnt out if they, if they don't succeed in it initially. So Yanni, I guess, I mean, you know, kind of tackling it from two angles. Are there, are there any communication tips and techniques you could share um, for, for those individuals, as well as what to do if they are feeling like they might be getting burned out? Yeah. And this is a really interesting question because it comes full circle to vision, right? Vision is, is the oil that lubricates the engine parts, right? When, when everybody's focused on that vision and everybody's passionate about it, it doesn't matter that you're 20 and I'm 40 and they're 60 and you're this gender and I'm that gender and you're from that background. And I have a name like Grazinopoulos that nobody can actually say and everybody runs from. None of that ma- cultural background, heritage, none of it matters, right? None of it matters when, we'll go back to Walmart, when the job of the day is from the greeter to the stalker, to the produce person, to the checkout person, is that everybody that walks in this building and out of this building literally has an experience of that. That was a wonderful time I had in that building. And that's, so I'm the general manager and I'm going, okay, I don't care what your job is, whether it's to other employees, whether it's to to, um, uh, customers that come in, Everybody walks out with a smile on their face. They cannot believe how much of a wonderful experience that they've had. It, 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 it bypasses everything. When you focus on the vision, it bypasses differences. It, it melds everything together in that way. And by the way, this works for families. By the way, everybody's a leader. Unless you live under a rock or you're one of those like, crazy. And I have mad respect for the people I'm about to say, you're one of those crazy coders. You never come out of your bedroom and you're coding for like 10 different companies. And maybe you don't have leadership, right? Everything's door dashed <laughs> in. You never see another human being fine. You don't have, but just about everybody else on this planet in some capacity is a leader in some capacity manages. So when you focus, by the way, the guy I was talking about, he was like 40 something years my senior. Complete different generational concept and mindset. I was super active into sports. He was super active into music, like totally different. But he just kept focusing on where we connected was the passion of the vision that we were focused on. And he just kept reminding, hey, what are we doing here? It's a, that's a powerful question, by the way. When you hire correctly, and you hire people who are passionate about your vision, then what, what are we doing here? Well, we're here to give people the best customer service experience. Well, we're here to get uh, business leaders unstuck. Well, we're here to be the number one e-commerce platform on Amazon. Do you care about that? I'm super passionate about getting business owners unstuck. Okay, I realize that today you answer the phone. Who knows what you're going to do tomorrow? But I need to, let's, let's, let's get them unstuck. Will you help me do it? 
yeah, let's do it again. And all of a sudden that inner motivation is, is coming up and it's passionate and it's exciting. And then if you're middle management, everybody sees that. Now you want some communication techniques. I'll tell you some communication techniques. Lead your vision as you're asking other people to do it. it you don't need to say anything, show it, right? So if, if, if you're a general manager in Walmart and somebody pulls you aside and says, oh, hey, you know, do you know what the light bulbs are? And you go, yeah, aisle five, and you keep walking. But you've been telling your entire staff to walk them to the light bulbs. Don't say a word. Lead by example. Do what you're telling people to do, right? Somebody, you're, you're, hey, you got to walk our customers to the light bulbs. And then an employee comes to you and says, I can't figure out how to use the new HR machine. Go ask someone else. Don't, no, you've got to encompass the vision. Be the person that you are asking them to be. When you do that, it doesn't matter how you communicate. Always be respectful, loving, and kind. But outside of that, it's not so much of the time we're looking at the wrong stuff. Have a clear vision. Be the person that you want them to be to achieve that vision. Hire people who are excited about the vision that you're trying to do. And if, by the way, if you can't find somebody who's excited about your vision, are you excited about your vision? Because a lot of times, if you can't get anybody else excited, it's because you're not excited. Well, I'm just in it to make money. Okay. That's really why you exist to do this. There was an interesting study, Eric. Uh, and I can't remember what university did this, but they... They brought in like 600 people. They're going to pay them, I don't know, it's like 10 bucks to dig a hole and put the dirt over here. So everybody, 10 bucks, dig a hole, put the, the dirt over there. They said, come back tomorrow. We all have $20 for you. So like 400 people came back and they said, okay, take the dirt, fill the hole. Where the dirt was, dig another hole and put it where the old hole was. They did it, 20 bucks. They said, $30 tomorrow if you come back to, basically all they were doing is moving dirt. And I think it got up to like four or five or six hundred dollars a day. They were paying this last guy to move dirt. Finally, everybody quit, and they all quit for the same. Because these guys were going to keep. I mean, five hundred dollars a day. I would love five hundred dollars a day to move dirt. An hour worth of work for five hundred bucks. I, I in a heartbeat. And they all quit for the same reason. There's no purpose in this. Don't. Tell me that your people are in it just for the money, because I'm going to tell you, your your business or your family, it's all in trouble. Yeah, that, I mean that's extremely thought provoking because I I know that it's easy to get stuck in that mindset of of what what it you know, if you don't have a purpose in your current position, you're trying to think of the reasons for why you're, you're in that position. I mean, obviously the money is the reason you're showing up day in and day out. But I think to that point of the, the the moving dirt story, I think it's really like if you don't have that that purpose or that passion for what you're doing, it doesn't matter how much they pay you because that guy could have stayed there. That that last guy, he could have kept shoveling dirt and it sounds like they would have just increased the pay indefinitely. He could be making $10,000 a day That's <laughs> at some point if he kept doing it. But it's it's just such a powerful story because that's not the end goal for, for us as human beings really is you got to have a purpose behind what you're doing. And I've, I've started to see that, you know, just as I've started my, my young career in healthcare here. And it's, you need to, you need to have that, that, that purpose in, in mind. I mean, taking care of people and making them be healthy would be the, you know, the overarching vision of, of a healthcare provider. So I think that's it. You got to know why you're doing it. Well, and let's let you mentioned burnout. Yes. Yeah. That's burnout. Right. So you said, Hey, and, 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 and it's interesting the way you said it, because it's how we say it. Well, what keeps them showing up day in and day out is the money, but then you have to have purpose in the job. And I'm going to tell you, if that's the reason you're showing up day in and day out, you are on the track to burnout. Just so you know, whoever it is, whoever's listening, if you are showing up for the money, you're on the path to burnout. Well, should I not ask for the money? No, 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 no. What you should do is you should find a place where you're so passionate about the vision, you can't believe that they're paying you that amount of money, right? That, because we are, again, full circle, without vision, the people perish. 
you will literally, literally, sometimes that is literally some of these people who, who die of these sudden heart attacks or some of these people who are like, go off the rails. It's because it, it became about the money. And at some point as a human being, we love, you know, we love the money, but you've seen these people, you've seen these people, they are, they drive to their job in their hundred thousand dollar car, leaving their couple million dollar home and they get to their job and they're miserable and they're angry. And you hear of these people having midlife crisis and running off with somebody else, having an affair, families being broken. You hear of these people selling it all and buying some like farm in Eastern Kentucky. And they know nothing about raising chickens. And you're like, what? Because it was, it can't ever be about the money. You will. And, and by the way, if you're a, a leader and you're trying to figure out why you just keep cycling through people and you can't retain people because it's not about the money, right? Every single person listening should be performing a job that they are, maybe they don't care about the job, but they're so passionate about what their company is doing that they're showing up every day because I'll tell you a story. When I was uh, training for that Fortune 200 company, I was a, a uh, state training coordinator for a fortune 200 company. It was right at the downturn of the economy in, in what? Oh, in 08, 09. And I looked at our administrative assistant. I said, do you know what we're doing here? She said, we're, we're, we're training people. I said, no, we're keeping kids in school. She looked at me like I was out of my mind. She goes, how are we keeping kids in school? I said, we are one of the few organizations that is hiring right now. And, and these people come in and we are training them on how to be successful. If it's, if we get this wrong, there's no other job for them to go to. The, the house is getting sold. They're moving in with the in-laws. They're leaving another state. Kids' lives are being disrupted. But if we're successful at what we do, that this family stays in their home, the kids stay in their school, and, and we are helping this society and community. All of a sudden, everything we did every day was 100% different. The way that she would approach work was 100% different because she bought into the vision. She got no raise. I, I wasn't in charge of her. I wasn't her direct boss. But her performance was completely different. Why? Because it's never just about the money. And in fact, most of the time, if it's mostly about the money, you will burn out. Yeah. I mean, I think I can just think of, you know, people listening. There's probably a lot of pharmacists listening right now. And, and the pandemic situation has not helped. But, you know, certainly it probably resonates with you if, if you're doing it for the money or if some, you know, if, if one job that you hated paid you twice as much as a different job that you like. I think a lot of people listening would take that job that they liked for less pay. I mean, I, I that's the answer I would pick. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't want to go slave away somewhere and make more doing something I absolutely despise. So I think it's, I mean, Yanni, you've, you've really, you've shed a lot of light on, you know, just what, what a vision means and why it's important to, to tie your, your personal passions and vision with what you're doing in your career, whether it be entrepreneurship or whether you're in the corporate world, whether you're in healthcare hospitals, you know, wherever you might be. And so, so to give you just a slight background, you know, the listeners are familiar, but you know, I, I shared with you a little bit about this before the interview, but a real reason why I started the podcast was to, to look at, you know, successful people like yourself with, with you know, leadership and, and find out really what keeps them driven day in, day out to, to chase that. And you can hear in the, the passion in your voice and the stories you've shared, you know, the, the passion you have for what your company is doing and that Graz LLC, your, your, your company. So we'll obviously tag that in the show notes, but, but yeah, Yanni, share with me what, you know, what is that force that, that keeps you driven towards your success every day? You know, and if, if it's, if it's a multitude of forces, you know, feel free to combine them. So I, it's interesting that you ask, and I'm just going to, I'll be super open with my response. And to any listeners, this is, this is me, right? So I'm just, I'm answering for me. Um, I, I, I'm a Bible believing Christian. And, and as that, I believe that one of the greatest things that I'm called to do in my life is love, help, and minister to other people. And I have a passion as part of my faith to see people walking in the life that they were created to walk in. And I look around and I don't see that most of the time. I see right. people who are trying to sling burgers or 
hammer in nails or do customer service or get on the phone or sell this widget so they can make money to go home and enjoy a few hours of their real life before they go to bed. And I see business owners who thought that they were launching a business to finally achieve freedom only to get a year or two down the road or five or 10 and go, my, I'm a slave to my business. My business is running me or I'm a slave to my VP role. I'm a slave to my director role. That is not how it's supposed to be. Why? I've, I've been there, right? And, and some of this comes out, I didn't have it easy growing up as a kid. I, in fact, when I tell, it's, a, it's usually a two-night event. I've, as you can tell from my bio, I, I've been a public speaker, traveled the country as a public speaker. My, my kind of personal story is a, is a two-night event but I've been there. I've walked in those shoes. I have found through my relationship with Christ, complete freedom. And so I am bent on helping people achieve that freedom. Really this move to vision, purpose, mission, vision, having that clear articulate, that's going to, you can't imagine the freedom that that brings. In fact, I'm working with a client right now. We've just finished building the vision. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, I said, what? He goes, I think some of my people are in the wrong place in their role. Now, I knew vision has the power to cast that light because once you clarify vision, I said, so I said, well, why do you think that? He goes, well, if we're all going this direction, this person's doing a bunch of things that won't ever get us there. Why are we even doing some of this stuff? And this person would be, it redefined it, not what it was, but the, it, it, it was like a spotlight showing him, oh, everything's out of balance, right? He was driving his, his business car without really looking under the hood and realizing, oh, I can't make the trip from San Francisco to New York. The car's not going to make it that far. Casting vision brought the, and now because of it, it's going to free up the lives of all the people in his organization, which by the way, will free up the lives of their family at home, right? Because they're t- it, it has this ripple effect. That is why I'm passionate because at the end of the day, I'm still affecting families. I'm still affecting people's lives. I'll never see the ripple effect but I know it's there. If I help you get your organizational vision or your team vision clear, it's literally going to affect people's lives every single day. Yeah. And Yanni, it's like that statement you shared earlier with that, that mentor, you know, 40 years, your senior or whatnot earlier in the career when he said that, you know, there's no way that it could not provide me with success. So I think, you know, that really sticks with me as far as remembering that story. Like if you if you're doing that with with getting buy-in of that vision as as a middle manager or even you know leading just a few individuals on a team, there's no way that that will not provide you with personal success in your own career. So I think that's a really important takeaway for anyone listening to to remember that. And the the final question I'll have for you, Yanni, is really kind of taking that driven question just a step further in terms of really teasing out what your definition of success is. So I think I mean you shared you know probably what you know, you define success as in that, in that, you know, later part where you were talking about, you know, your, your overall purpose of your life essentially is, is to, you know, minister to the, to the success of other people in terms of chasing their own personal goals. But if you were to just summarize that in, in, you know, a sentence or two about what success is to you, what, what would that be? Point B come full circle to how we started this. A vision is the point B of the GPS. In fact, That's the easiest question of all the questions. The entire point of this discussion has been defining that. The vision is the end point. The vision is point B. So when you've hit that, you you have it clear to find, you know where you are. That's success. Yeah. Every time. That's great. Well, this this has been a fantastic discussion. I hope you had fun talking about vision. I hope everybody listening enjoyed, you know, hearing the stories that Yanni had to share and I will certainly prepare, you know, in the show notes, best ways to, to access your business and website. If someone wants to contact you and reach out, Yanni, what's the best way they do that? Uh, you know, it's really funny. It's uh, Yanni, I-O-A-N-N-I-S at grazlsc.com is my email. 
Uh, that is my personal email. You can go to Graz, G-R-A-T-S, LLC.com. Uh, it is, our website is very much built around uh, the ministry coaching, the nonprofit coaching that we do. Um, but it doesn't mean that's the only coaching that we do. And um, those are the best ways to get a hold of me. Would love to hear, if nothing else, even just feedback, challenges. You're out of your mind, Yanni. Would love to hear any of it from your audience. It only makes me better. Uh, and Eric, thank you. The, I have had a blast. This has been wonderful. It's been fun. It, it reminds me, I mean, hey, insanity. That that was my initial reaction to, to the earlier statement you had was thinking about, hey, this is insane if someone could actually do that as a middle manager in Walmart because it's just so rare. So I hope people leave this episode feeling uplifted, knowing that you can do it, knowing how to clearly define your vision and, and chase that success. So Yanni, I appreciate you being on so much. I think we'll have to have a future discussion about how to become unstuck as a leader if you're open to coming back on the show later. I would love it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, sir. Take care. Bye.